Good morning, good morning. Praise be to God. And welcome to the early morning Bible reading with Victoria Cherie. Praise the Lord. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this live audio. And I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this morning, the reading will come from Mark chapter 11. Yesterday, I was in Mark chapter 10. Praise the Lord. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany and at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye? This say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way, and found the colt tied by the door without a place where two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye, loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees, and strawed them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father, David, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. We're in verse 12 of Mark chapter 11. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter for ever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Verse 18. And the scribes and, ch and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saying unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursedest is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be, thy, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. We're in verse 27. And they come again to Jerusalem, 
And as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders and say unto him, By what authority dost thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will ask, I will also ask of you one question and answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reason with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they fear the people. For all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And the last verse, verse 33, And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Praise the Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed on this morning. Praise be to God. So I thank God for the reading of his word. And I am going to work my way backwards all the way up. So um, in this chapter, it speaks about, um, you know, the scribes, the Pharisees, the chief priests, those who are high um, in, in, uh, in, in our firm of terms in church area, you know, those who feel themselves are more highly than everyone else. Um, they address Jesus in a way of asking him, you know, by what authority do you do this? Like, who do you think you are? And Jesus said, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. And if you can answer this question, then I'll tell you by what authority I, I'm working in. Um, or who gave me this authority? Praise the Lord. But they were so much, they were so concerned with trying to, to trap Jesus in a way of trying to, to trick him in a way as if he didn't know all things already. Um, but it was just funny to me to read this and, and the Lord's like, well, you know, I'll answer your question if you answer mine. <laughs> and if you don't answer mine, I don't, I don't need to tell you anything. And it it just goes to show, you know, we don't have to defend the Lord. The Lord, you know, God can defend himself. Um, we don't have to get into arguments about over Christ. We don't have to go uh, tit for tat because, you know, wh what the word is, what the word state, and that's what it is. The word of God is true and it doesn't return back to God void. And God does not need the help. <laughs> he stands alone by himself, all powerful. And he can control any situation. He can take care of any situation. So I found a little humor in reading that um, in that sense because, you know, God can do anything. And um, also in this uh, verse is where, you know, Jesus had went into the temple and he, um, you know, he, he was a little bit upset with the fact that they had made the temple um, you know, like a flea market, <laughs> selling things instead of instead of using it for what it was um, to teach the gospel. Um, so I praise the Lord for that. That you know, the Lord just doesn't. There, there are things that He's just like you know, this this is not it. This is not what this is for. He was all about correction um, and making sure things were done in decency and in order. God is truly amazing. It was another thing that stuck out to me while reading this. Um, and the fact that the Lord speaks about having faith when we pray and believe everything. So when we are asking God for things and we're praying to him, we have to believe what we're saying. Like that's just like um, a salesperson, you know, trying to sell someone something and, you know, and they don't really believe in, in, in what they're asking or what they're selling. You know, but they're going to sell it to you <laughs> and and they ain't never used it before. Um, and that's the same thing as if, you know, we're praying to the Lord about every little detail and anything that you need. You have to believe what you're asking God for in order for it to work. And that's what the Lord is stating in, in verse uh, 22 through all the way out uh, 26. But he's also speaking in a sense of if you're asking me for something and, and you didn't forgive someone, go back and get that right first. And then I come again and ask me, make sure you clear the way, make sure you don't have anything against you um, before you ask me. Because if you want me to forgive you, but you haven't forgave your brothers and sisters, sisters in Christ, you know, or those who are against you, then um, why, how is it that you want me to forgive you? So um, I think that is just 
that's very important that we need to remember. You know, we may have things and sometimes we, we may have unforgiveness in our hearts and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. And so just continue to ask the Lord to search your heart. I, had to do, I have to do the same thing all the time. Lord, you just search my heart. I have to remind myself um, even more now to ask the Lord to search my heart um, because I want my heart to continue to be pure. I don't want anything that's in it that would infiltrate anything or that would hinder my prayers. You know, so I thank the Lord that he gives us everything that we need to do things um, in order the way that he he operates. Um, and then the other thing is just to have faith when you're praying, believe what you're praying about, believe that God can do these things, have faith that he can do it every little thing and watch God show up. And he said, whatsoever, I'm just going to read this little, um, read that passage again, uh, verse 23, for verily I say unto you that whatsoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. And those things that he sh- shall, um, mm-mm-mm. Believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he saith because he believed. That's the blessing behind it. When you're praying, have faith. When you're praying, believe. Do not doubt in your heart. Just know that I can speak to this mountain that's sitting in front of me. And I can say, be thou cast into the sea. And I believe that it will happen. It will happen in Jesus name. You have to have crazy faith. You, you may have that faith when everybody else think that you are crazy, <laughs> have that type of faith, have that type of crazy faith. Because when others say no, Jesus says, yes, God says, yes. When, when those who are around you don't believe and they're still stuck in a small box that they're, they've been in for years, but God is able keep on pressing continue to keep the faith and do not allow anyone to make you think that it's not possible. You serve a God. We serve a big God. We serve a God that is bigger than any, anything that we can possibly imagine. He is all powerful. He can do anything. And you have to get to a place where you have crazy faith and there's no limit. There is no limit. We put the limitations on God because when we begin to doubt, even a little bit, all God asks is for us is to have a mustard seed faith. And I don't know if you guys know the size of a mustard seed, but that thing is tiny. That thing is small. All you need is a little bit in order for God to move and work things out in your favor and no doubt. So trust and believe there are things in our lives that God has showed his hand in that some of us may have forgotten about. If you stop and think of situations that have raised up in your life and see how God turned those situations around, even if you got to go back and write them all down again and keep it in front of you to be reminded that, okay, you know what? I was in a situation similar to this. And I I remember I was kind of uneasy about it, but I did trust God and he did. He worked it out on this day. And he did another thing for me a couple of months ago, you know, and you rem- you start to remind yourself and you begin to say, Lord, strengthen my faith. Help me not to doubt you. And so he is the same God as he was before when he did those things in your life and when he showed up as he is now. So trust in God, believe in him, have faith and know that he is able to do All of the things that we have asked, but we have to have faith. Praise the Lord. Go your way into your village against you and soon as me. Praise the Lord. So I thank God for the reading of the word um, on this morning. And I pray that you all enjoy your uh, Friday. This is a Friday before the month of May comes is coming up. And that's my birthday month. Praise the Lord. I thank God for that. Um, so I just thank the Lord. So on every morning, I like to extend an invite for you guys to come listen in to the word of God going forth every day, seven days a week, 
at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my ministry, La Like La Lock Ministry. That's the first time I got tongue tied. Lord Jesus, help me this morning, which is on the leadership of my pastor, Pastor Jimmy Griffith. Praise the Lord. And you can do so by dialing in at 773-922-8270. And get the number is not uh, 773-922-8270. But praise the Lord. I thank God on this morning for those who listen. I ask, I ask the Lord to continue to bless you in everything. And I pray that we all be obedient. And I pray that we all have faith in Jesus Christ. Pray, I pray that we do not doubt the things that we ask God for. And I pray that we continue to believe and know that God is able to do all things. Nothing is impossible to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I pray traveling grace and mercy over everyone. I pray healing and deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that we all continue to have that strong desire to fall in love with Jesus Christ, to fall in love with God and allow God to love on us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray on this morning. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you all. And if it is the Lord's will, I'll be back um, tomorrow is Saturday. So I'm not sure I usually do it on Monday through Fridays. But if it is the Lord's will, I'll be back again um, in the book of Mark, chapter 12. God bless you all, and I pray you all have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord. Amen.